and I work like a dog. Day and night. Workplace discrimination is nothing new, and for marginalized people, the blow of it has always been amplified. However, if your intersectional identity includes any form of blackness, <laughs> that motherfucker got out of control. See twice as good for half as much quotes passed down through the generations. Historically, black people have consistently had to fight for our rights, and the organizations of unions have been a major part of black labor history, not only in the US, but globally. So what lessons can we as people looking to change the world for the better learn from unions around the world? No, stay, 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 stay. It'll be worth it, I promise. Oh, you saw a Spanish union in the title and you thought this video wasn't gonna be black as shit. Try again. Today, we'll be going over my experience working in a Spanish union, learning more about global black labor history, <laughs> because we global, amen, and listening to some union members' lived experiences. There'll definitely be a couple of special guests to help us do this, so stay tuned for the goodness. Black organized labor traces its origins to at least 1850 with the formation of the American League of Colored Laborers. The short-lived organization's goals included the development and benefit of black skilled laborers and the creation of financial institutions to promote black wealth and business. In the midst of the Civil War, millions of formerly enslaved Africans migrated from southern plantations to the northern states in a general strike as described by W.E.B. Du Bois. A controversial concept even today, it is an important description of the role in which enslaved Africans fought for their emancipation by denying their labor and even using it to assist the Union Army. During the Reconstruction era when most white unions debated and ultimately chose to restrict membership to white laborers only, black workers created their own unions. Most notably, the Colored National Labor Union, which opens its rank to all workers regardless of color or gender, fought for equal access to trades for all laborers and secured improvements for many black workers at a time when just being a union member was grounds for a visit from the KKK. As white unions experimented with cooperatives, black caulkers created their own successful cooperative, the Chesapeake Marine Railway and Dry Dock Company organized by Frederick Douglass and Isaac Myers. As white women such as Kate Mullaney formed unions in the North, black washerwomen and domestic workers in the South formed their own unions. They successfully raised their wages and gave themselves way more autonomy over their work through labor actions such as the 1881 Atlanta washerwoman strike. As the 19th century turned into the 20th, black workers continued to struggle for their wages as millions immigrated to the North for industrial jobs. While some unions accepted them within their ranks as inferiors, others, such as those affiliated with the American Federation of Labor outright, <laughs> barred them from their organizations. One union that vehemently rejected this sentiment was the IWW, which was organized explicitly under the philosophy of solidarity, anti-racism, and anti-capitalism. Lucy Parsons and Ben Fletcher, two of its most notable non-white members, successfully organized and led diverse groups of workers in the pursuit of higher wages and the abolition of capitalism. In the mid-1920s, A. Philip Randolph fought to have the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters recognized by the AFL. After succeeding in the late 1930s, labor leader Randolph became an important figure within the civil rights movement. Civil rights and organized labor have always been inseparable for black workers, a fact recognized by MLK and other progressive labor leaders such as Walter Ruther. Black workers have been historically overrepresented in unions and reap the numerous benefits of union membership. They've even organized revolutionary caucuses within these unions, such as DRUM or DRUM. In the present day, Chris Smalls has led a successful organizing drive against Amazon. While Smalls' commitment to Amazon labor union is questionable, he is proof that black leaders continue to drive the labor movement. Now, I'm about to be vulnerable on the internet, so listen well. I'm Nigerian and black, and I I don't know if you know anything about those two identity groups. We don't really be doing this shit like that, so go ahead and pay attention for me. I have been socioeconomically disadvantaged for the vast majority of my life. In fact, I still am socioeconomically disadvantaged. I'm not disclosing salaries because quite frankly, that's not all of my business to share, but just know that I am not even lower middle class. I was able to go to Spain because of numerous scholarships that I received and me working two to three jobs at a time as I have done since I began university. I'm a junior now, thanks for asking, by the way. I am no stranger to needing to not only advocate for my own wages, but for others as well. I know that the president that I said can and more than likely will be utilized when hiring other people that look like me. My experience in the US calls to mind the most marked racialized bigotry that I personally witnessed in Spain. The very xenophobic, 
racist and classist sorts of stigma towards Moroccan individuals that I found most readily in older Spanish populations that lived under the dissolution of Franco's dictatorship, but also in some younger people that uphold this antiquated idea of Spanish values. They're the same bigoted hyper-right values backed by the Catholic Church that caused many Spanish citizens to continue to uplift the former dictator's rule, even though under it thousands were ruthlessly unalive, essayed, and heavily traumatized. Hmm. Why does it sound familiar? And why is the Catholic Church always involved? Anyways, you know who else was a major colonizing nation? Britain. Let's talk about black labor history in the UK. Now, I am not from the UK, even though I am a first generation immigrant of a country that they did colonize. You know what? We gonna leave it at that. There are numerous directions that I could take this part of the video in. However, I think it's appropriate that we start with the British Union that will be delved into in further detail later on in the video by one of its own members, the United Tech and Allied Workers Union. The union is an offshoot of an even bigger union based in the UK called the Communication Workers Union, which was formed by the merging of the British National Communications Union and the Union of Communications Workers back in 1995. Weren't the names just so creative, y'all? Let me stop. They're supposed to be easy to understand to facilitate easier organizing. I just like extra. The two older organizations were preceded by numerous other organizations that span all the way back to local linesmen associations in the 1870s. The present Communication Workers Union is the seventh largest union in Britain and is affiliated with the Trades Union Congress and Global Trade Secretariat Union Network International. Now, the Trades Union Congress is a federation of trade unions that represent most workers in England and Wales. As of recently, that looks like 48 affiliated unions representing 5.5 million, a million people. Million people with 50.5% of that population being of color and 22.8% of it being black. Imagine all those workers with access to legal representation and counsel while also having a political lobbying machine to argue for its working class interests to ensure employment security, fight back against discrimination, and offer holiday benefits. Because one thing about the average Brit is they're going to go on holiday. They're going to go. These, These statements, statements are in no way declaring that their system is perfect or that the UK is some form of utopia. It's actually theorized that the only reason that Brits have universal health care is the historical British ruling class was trying to make what would be a socialist democracy sound a little bit less appealing. It didn't work. However, it's no wonder why daily life for working class citizens is simply better in most of Europe than it is in America. I said what I said. With the existence of such robust workers' rights campaigns, what was to be expected? Exactly. Meanwhile, American politicians are still arguing over whether or not a four-day work week is possible or moral. A moral. They are, by the way. Countries like Spain are actually paying their smaller companies to try a four-day work week, just for framing purposes. Next up, we have the interviews of individuals from unions in all of the countries that we just finished discussing. The US, UK, and Spain. Let's get into it. Hi, my name is Strong Boy, I Yeah, I'm part of um, UTOR, which is the United Tech and Allied Workers Union, which is part of so, hey, I'm Jackie Alcine. I'm a software engineer. I've worked at a few places, but most nominally was Code for America, specifically on the tax, uh, the get your refund or tax benefits team. Por los cuatro meses que estaba en España, yo trabajé con un partido de gente maravillosa de la Unión General de Trabajadores y Trabajadoras. La Unión General de Trabajadores y Trabajadoras provee servicios para que toda la gente del clase obrero en España utilicen sus servicios que están disponibles bajo de la ley. Estos servicios incluyen pero no son limitados a asesoramiento legal y recursos para el desarrollamiento profesional. Específicamente yo pasé mucho de mi tiempo trabajando con el partido de asesoramiento legal. Um, decentralized, I'd say, like, we don't, um, we don't have many members in certain, well, we're not, we're not represented by a certain, um, we're not all in a certain workplace. We're all different workplaces, I would say. Mm. So, you saw provides, like, um, help for people who, um, need help with their employment circumstances. Like, maybe they're getting laid off, or they're having a problem at work, or they need representation in that way. It, um, also helps with organising your workplace if you want to try and do that. And, yeah, loads of stuff, to be honest. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was working there as a, a senior software engineer and the particular project or service that I was working on was this thing called Get Your Refund. 
the idea was that people can go online and file their taxes. It's kind of similar to using Tur TurboTax and H&R Block. The twist that we had with the product was that as you file through the process, depending on what state you're in and whatever kind of federal programs there are around, you can then get tax credits. So like, let's say you're a single parent and you have a few children and there's like a tax credit that's available for your state or through the federal program, you can get that refund as well as getting a tax refund as well. One of the more common examples that was actually just ended about last year, yeah, it was last year, it was the earned income tax credit for like single parents and whatnot. So that was a prime example of the kind of things I was working on at Code for America. I think the reps, like the reps is the part where people come and ask for help with their employment um, needs is really well done in our union, you know, like they're overworked, I would say. Mm. But um, yeah, it's really good that they, um, people are so passionate about it, even though they're volunteers, and they get a little good results from the things they've tried today. De verdad, mi experiencia con la Unión General de Trabajadores y Trabajadoras en España fue genial. Absolutamente fenomenal. Yo tenía la oportunidad para trabajar con un partido de gente que son maravillosas. No sé cómo describir lo otro que he tenido la oportunidad de trabajar con gente muy amable en los Estados Unidos también, pero en España era un nivel diferente. En todos los eventos, en todas las oficinas, me sentía cómodo, me sentía como era un parte de un partido. Me sentía apoyado en todos los contextos y también sentía como si tenía una pregunta lo podía hacer a toda la gente que estaba en la oficina um, y también como una persona que hacía una práctica para una clase eso es evidentemente en los Estados Unidos no pienso que Tendría todas las oportunidades para viajar, especialmente a otros lugares como yo tenía en España con la Unión. Todos los abogados que trabajaban en la Unión General de Trabajadores y Trabajadoras eran bien educados y todavía son. <risa> y ellos eran muy informativas con toda la información de la ley y cómo se interactúa con las vidas cotidianas de toda la gente que están sirviendo. Y a mí eso me importó mucho. OPEIU, the Office Professionals Employees International Union. That's what it stands for and that's how I remember it, right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the parent union that um, Code for America Workers United or CFA, CFAA, CFA, C, there's so many abbreviations, but that's what um, Code for America's workers are on, you're organized under. Um, they gave us a lot of support. Um, we had a situation <laughs> earlier actually last year where um Kofa america and the union disagreed heavily on who and what was in the union you can imagine how very weird that is seeing your manager on a or effectively on a podium saying like yeah you know i think they do this but they wouldn't qualify to be in this thing and th there was a lot of dynamic that, that i would say embroiled a lot more people towards wanting more for themselves En Europa en general, yo pienso que hay esta actitud de oh, el racismo no existe, o, <ríe> el racismo existe de manera diferente que existe en los Estados Unidos. Y pienso que el partido en UGT hizo un bien trabajo de uh, disminuir todas las diferencias entre la raza y el color de piel y cómo ellos afectan a la experiencia de gente que específicamente son negros y cómo ellos accesan los servicios. Pero también yo pienso que en general, en países como España, en Europa, hay un desarrollamiento que es necesario para seguir adelante en entender cómo funciona el racismo sistémico. <risa> Porque yo pienso que los países en Europa de lo más son un poquito más progresivos y a un nivel más alto hay mucha gente que entienden cómo se interactúan uh, el racismo sistémico con sus vidas cotidianas y cosas así pero no sé si es porque trabajaba con individuales que eran un poquito más mayor en edad o personas que eran de una generación diferente que yo pero yo pensaba que había un espacio de desarrollamiento <risa> uh, 
que ellos podían utilizar para hacer más servicios, específicamente para gente que son negros. Porque, como ya dije, y como todas las personas que están viendo este video saben, la vida cotidiana de gente negra son diferentes. <risa> y no importa en cuál parte del mundo que estás, siempre son diferentes. Porque aunque los programas son más accesibles para gente de color que necesitan utilizarlos, hay que enfocar en la manera en que aplicamos los programas. Y eso es algo que, que suplica <risa> desarrollamiento. Y eso es una área que suplica el progreso. We're obviously underrepresented in, in tech in general, but I think we could have more black members in, um, in the reunion. We have started doing things to reach out to more black members and we do have like a fame, or as we've already discussed, like black um, ethnic minority um, caucus. Right. But yeah, there aren't as many black members as I would have assumed, given the, the focus of something like this and Labour, mm -hmm. which would be good. Also, um, yeah, I think we probably aren't very good at issues like specifically like black women issues or something like that, like, you know, things where people are facing like multiple things that are like protecting characteristics rather than a very clear cut one issue sort of thing but that's just unions in general In terms of the kind of the things that I see work as a Code for America kind of pushing for something we were slamming very hard about and something we had full justification for it was a four day work week. And the fact that we see so much evidence of states also piloting these programs and with high success and internal rejection of these concepts led people to kind of confuse, uh, question, what, is it, what does it mean to be aligned with government if we're actively avoiding the new ventures that government's going towards? Imagine where like, you know, people who work in a postal office can work four days a week instead of having to work six or seven to get things out. Like, those are the kind of things we're trying to demonstrate. Like, again, if we are able to sit in this different presence, like, again, we, I mean, we don't have pension, but we had like an you know, Athena healthcare, which is better than most. If we have these spaces in which we could be comfortable with, there is a reason to push it forward. There's also strong cases made by parents who are in an organization showing that if they had these four days a week or be able to allocate the hours, they can handle childcare so much easier. Which, again, was kind of ironic because one of the members of the management bargaining committee during the unit clarification meeting, it was hard for her to schedule time to attend because she had to figure out how to get childcare done. It would have been very, very, very serendipitous if they already had this in place. It's this cyclical thing because it I think it's a cyclical thing where we try to demonstrate something there is value in it and it's rejected solely for the purpose of just keeping people at work. Pues para responder a esa pregunta yo voy a empezar con mi experiencia como un estudiante que hacía una práctica. Yo pienso, pienso que haga una lista de vocabulario para ayudar a toda la gente que quieren hacer una práctica específicamente para ellos, porque yo pienso que eso fue una de las cosas más difíciles cuando empezaba era todos los, los términos y la ley, el vocabulario y cosas así. Algo de un cheat sheet, ¿me entiende? Uh, para ayudar. Porque yo pienso que eso haga la experiencia de la práctica un poquito más cómodo. Porque yo tenía fluencia en español antes de ir a España y yo podía tener conversaciones y cosas así. Era un poquito más fácil para mí en ese sentido, pero no me he entrenado en todos los términos del gobierno y la ley, es precisamente la ley de los obreros, <risa> no sé. Y si podía hacer un programa, yo pienso que lo haga que todos los servicios que son ofrecidos por la OGT sean fundados por otros causas o por el gobierno, porque yo pienso que me pone mal que los obreros tienen que pagar para los servicios y yo entiendo que los abogados que trabajan para la OGT necesitan ser pagados. Así que yo prefiero que esos fondos sean de otros lugares que los obreros. Si ¿Sí me entienden. So the program I would make is definitely paying the reps. Um, mm. So it's not free labor and ideally like the people, yeah, I guess everyone who's like volunteering for the union and are like more tangible way would be paid. Right. and compensate for the time and get like yeah apart from more than just expenses um i would do more outreach and like advertising i think because a lot of people don't really understand what union is outside of like strikes mm. and like the benefits you can get from being part of one and i just generally try and like leftist agitate in the in the black community 
I feel like a lot of black tech, tech, um, tech people aren't very like particularly minded, does that make sense in the UK? Mm. So yeah, I try and combat that as well. Mm. Now that we've internalized some of the experiences that black workers and unions have in the present day all around the globe, let's talk about some of the ways you can contribute to black workers. By being one of my patrons! Now here's a shout out to the patrons because they're so great and they fund all the things on this channel so you should become a patron! Shout out to our newest patrons, Stacey Ann M and Demitas. Thank you and all of our other wonderful patrons for supporting the channel. The Victory of the Creator Patreon has five tiers varying from $3 to $150, depending on how much you would like to contribute to the channel. It's available in the description and on the channel's landing page. You can also subscribe to our YouTube memberships where you get access to private community posts about videos and progress. Also, don't forget you can support using one-time options such as Super Thanks and Super Chats, available directly on the video and in the comments. If those options don't interest you, you can also use the coffee link in the description box. If you're not able to support the channel monetarily, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Here's a list of physical items that the channel is saving up for. Our email's in the description to contact us if you have access to any of these things and just want to help us out by sending us something. Now, speaking of helping. As a U.S. full-time university student that works two jobs and makes things on the internet doing nearly all of the jobs that a full-service, in-house creative agency would be doing, this means a lot of things, at least for me. It means that many things that workers like myself have been asking for are more than possible and actually make more sense than current systems that the U.S. has in place. I'm looking at you, free healthcare and low to no-cost higher education. For me, building upon this tradition looks like utilizing my voice to continue to speak up on matters regarding equitable pay for student workers, raising or eliminating the income ceiling for state subsidized healthcare because it really just should be free, and supporting things like the Affordable Connectivity and Lifeline Acts that allow for U.S. citizens to remain connected in our increasingly digital, read as chronically online, age. Now, you could pull a Jackie and help organize an entire union, or pull a me and be a person that supports the people that are doing things like that with everything that you have. I hope you've enjoyed learning about some global black labor history with us. But now, I'm curious to hear how your life would be changed if your job had a union, or if you had access to things like free healthcare or low to no cost higher education. I also want to hear about how else we can continue to build upon the tradition of labor organizing for BIPOC and other marginalized individuals. Let me know in the comment section. I have victoriously completed another video, and until the next time, bye!